Welcome to the Co-Movement Gym Podcast. This week, we are talking with Jake Chard. Jake started casually running in 2017 as a way to lose weight. On a trip to visit his brother in Boston, he got bullied into doing a trail half marathon in May of 2018, and he's been hooked on trail running ever since, completing distances from half marathon to 100 milers. Accomplishments would include winning the Thoroughbred 50K in 2019 and first place male at the 2023 Brookfield Classic 50K. I would like to thank our sponsors, Native Pass Supplements, Lombardi Chiropractic, Home Sweet Home Cleaning, and Thin Line Martial Arts. If you are enjoying this content, I ask that you support these companies in the description and take advantage of the enticing discount they're providing our listeners by using our code COMO15, that's C-O-M-O-15. I thank each and every one of you for being on this journey with us. Now, please enjoy the show. Jake, welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well, Josh. Yourself? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. I was excited to talk with you. We got to meet each other at the Brookfield Classic, and uh, we got a lot in common, and you're a stellar runner, and so we wanted to have you on the podcast, man. Oh, well, thanks, man. I, I don't know about stellar. I had, a, I had a good day. It was a beautiful course, beautiful weather, and uh was able to just put it down and have some fun. So, no, and everyone was super cool, so it was, it was a blast. I'm glad I came out. So you mentioned that your favorite memory in running is your brother finishing his first hundred miler. Why is that your favorite memory? Oof, getting deep with it quick. Um, so, uh, so that, that, that's my brother, Steve. He's like 14 years older than me. Um, so we never really like, like growing up, we we're always pretty in pretty different points in our lives. And uh, he's the one who actually got me into running um, back in 2017, 2018. Um, he was like, hey, you should sign up for this half marathon. It's, it was right around my birthday a couple months later. And uh, um, it's like, ah, you know, I, I don't really know. We'll think about it. And as all good uh, big brothers, older siblings do, he kind of braided me into doing it. Went out, had a blast. And um, since then, it's just been, been growing, growing, growing as a runner. And it's been nice because I've really like mended our relationship and like brought us a lot closer. So um, it was called uh, Riverlands up in Maine. And we went out. It was a 12 and a half mile out and back. And uh, I'm a little bit faster than he is. So I was able to, um, you know, just see him at the turnarounds and all that stuff. And then uh, I remember it was like mile 90 something. Uh, I'm on my way out. He's on his way to the turnaround. And we just like gave each other this giant hug. Like we did it. You know, we, we still got 10 plus miles. And if you've ever done anything like that, you know, 10 miles is a long ways to go. Um, but, and then, uh, so I finished and it was just, uh, it, it was, it was really nice. It, it was just, it was a great time. And, um, you know, just seeing him accomplish his goal. And like I said, he's the one who got me into all this crazy stuff. So it was just, it was awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like quite a bonding experience with your older brother, right? Oh yeah, a a absolutely. I mean, he lives out in Boston, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's five and a half hours away, but we talk all the time, you know, we, we see each other a couple of times a year just, just to go running, you know, which is, which is great. So yeah, it's a great time. Yeah. That's uh think about that. Like how many brothers uh, finish a hundred miler together? Think about it from like a statistical standpoint. Um, I would say very, very few. <laughs> it's pretty rare. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, you think about just what did I say, one percent of people in general will run a marathon this year or something like that, and then it gets lesser and less every time. So yeah, it was it was awesome. But shout out to Steve. Yeah, man. Um, and he's also the one that got you into running um, in general. So I want to talk about the first half marathon that he roped you into. Um, I think you described it as like bullying you or something in, into doing it. Um, and so tell me about like, you weren't a runner really at that point. I think you had said you were doing maybe three or four mile runs um, leading up to that. So how was that experience? Oh, it was, it was great. So it was, uh, it was part of the North Face series. Uh, it was down in uh, Bear Mountain, which is in like Westchester County, maybe in New York. Um, but yeah, so I had, uh, after college, well, in college, before college, after college, I had put on a bunch of weight 
And so I was doing it more just like for fitness levels and, uh, you know, drop, drop some weight, feeling good. Uh, we're sitting around his kitchen table around Christmas and, uh, He's just like, you, you know, you, you you should sign up for this. Me and my buddy are doing it. They've done a couple of races and ah, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. And, uh, it, you know, he just started bullying me like, ah, you're not going to do it. No way. And uh, so anyway, so under the table, signed up for it, uh, went out in probably beginning of May, I think. And uh, it was great. It was it, like I said, it was it was called it was Bear Mountain North Face Series. So super uh, real big. A um, lot of support, just a, a great time. We ran maybe like six, seven miles together and uh, caught up, did this, did that. He uh, stopped to use the bathroom. I'm like, all right, I'll see you, and just took off. And at I, I, that point, I realized he was he was holding me back. So, <laughs> um, but no, finished, had a great time, and uh, you know, the rest is history from there. Yeah, that was sort of like that was sort of like your introduction into uh, into the addiction now, you know, cuz now you're you're quite a quite a runner, quite a into quite a, a lot of events. Um and so that's cool knowing that that's that's where you started and I think it's interesting and I want to spend some time on this. You um it sounds like you had a lot of success losing weight um running and maybe that's one of the initial things that attracted you to it can you walk us through that journey like how much weight you've lost um you know the benefits and what you've seen from what you're doing now yeah so um it's kind of a two-part story three-part story but uh so senior year of college um i was about 230 pounds um you know just I had always been active, uh, playing sports in high school and all that. I was always a bigger guy though. Um, so senior year of college, uh, that last semester buddies was like, Hey, listen, let's, let's get you down to 200 for graduation. Um, so, you know, through, through going to the gym, doing some running, just cardio in general, got down to, you know, 201, 200, and then started celebrating and, uh, the beer started putting them back on pretty quick. Um, graduate, Get a full-time job across the street from a deli so you know we're grabbing sandwiches all the time good food quickly realized i was back up to about uh i think it was about 250 um a little, a little touch over um realized again not where i want to be um and so just got gym membership started going started grinding um uh, used the elliptical a lot just to, you know, 250 pounds on the knees was, was a uh, pretty, pretty painful running, but I was able to drop uh, quite a few pounds. And then, um, once the weather got nicer, started running outside and, uh, that was probably a good, and then, so at that point I dropped down to about 170. So, uh, but I was, I was very, you, you could see it in the face. The eyes were all sunk in. I did not do the last, uh, few pounds very healthily, um, as a gym owner, I'm sure you can appreciate that. Um, so uh just found a healthier lifestyle and uh you know and that turned into more running running turned into uh eating a little bit more but realizing that that's okay and just being happy and healthy with it uh you know it, it fluctuates from time to time but uh you, you know I, I, way more energy um body feels good all the time i'm uh we, we love going to the mountains going hiking um kayaking all that stuff so it's it's nice kind of being one of those friends that uh, whenever someone's up for an adventure or something, just like, oh, who can we get to go? Oh, let's call Jake. Let's call Josh. Let's let's go see what's up. So um, that's that's about the synopsis of it. That's awesome, man! Congratulations, dude. That's that's a that's a lot of weight. Where are you sitting right now, Jake? For weight, weight was uh, probably about one eighty, one eighty five. Um, Damn. So Damn. Technically a little too big. I, I I got a gut still, but uh, I just call it extra running fuel most of the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I think you look great, man. Um, definitely, okay. dude. That's uh, sixty five pounds. That's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, not only did you add probably a, a lot of years <laughs> to your life, but you also feel better. And I think you brought up a really cool point. Um, you know, you're able to do more things like with friends and family and like more adventures. Um, you know, it, it, that just goes so, so far. So you can make obviously more memories, you know, um, you know, yeah, doing that. I, th I think this is important. I want to talk about this. You mentioned 
um, getting down, I think you said to about 170. And maybe that was too thin for you. And now that you're at a happy medium, um, about 185, let's say, um, you know, there's a balance with starving yourself slash depriving yourself and not being happy, but maybe, you know, quote unquote, looking the best you've ever have, right? But it's just not maintainable. Then there's the body type that allows you to be optimally healthy, look pretty darn good, but still have some fun. Um, and so for you, that sounds like it's about 15 pounds more than when maybe you had, you know, habits that weren't sustainable long term. Um, can you speak to the importance of that balance? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I mean, overall, my goal was to get uh, below 170. For some reason, that was just the number in my head. Um, you know, it, I think based off the BMI scale, that's that's where I should be. Um, so I I got down to 180, we'll say relatively easily, um, 175, and then it was a real grind um, to get down to um, to get below 170. Um, and I mean, it was I won't say starving myself, but it was being meticulous about everything that I ate and you know really limiting my consumption. Um, I wasn't doing a whole lot of running, um, so I wasn't you know worried about, you know, refueling the body. It was more just like, like going to the gym and just trying to burn, burn, burn. Um, and it just, when I got down there, I was happy. Like, Hey, I hit my goal. But like I said, my eyes were sunk in. I, uh, I had energy, but I couldn't really sustain it too long. And just looking, you know, in the future as to like, all right, well, is this maintainable? Um, sure. But it was way, you know, I, I always say like, I'm kind of lazy. So it was, it was way too much effort to really do it. Um, and like I said, I wasn't doing it the right way. Um, so it was, and it, it would not have made me happy to stay down there. Um, you know, may, maybe it would have had a couple of years on the end of my life. Maybe that little nagging knee pain would have gone away, but um, just find, it was about finding that happy medium. And, uh, you know, last night watched the, uh, the, commanders game versus the bears and i'm a bills fan but uh you know we all got together and uh we were eating pizza and my buddy's like i know you want the other half of that pizza i'm like well yeah of course i do so um it, it, you know it's just but it was about not not feeling guilty about eating you know certain foods which i mean it's been several years since i was at that point so i guess i don't think about it too much anymore but um just living life and you know so i woke up and went for a run this morning instead <laughs> eat the pizza and, uh, and, and go for a run you know it's a good combination it is so important for our listeners to really um understand like what you're saying with that you know we get so many clients that come through the door that think you know 10 pounds 20 pounds five pounds is going to make their life so much drastically better but like when you really dig into you know why is it that you want to lose that extra weight a lot of times it has nothing to do with the weight itself um and so you know we always really preach the happy medium um you know we want to optimize health through taking in you know the right nutrients and having healthy relationships and exercise and you know healthy habits day to day, but what your body settles in at, if you're doing all of that correctly, is really where it needs to be. And so, you know, we see people that come in and, you know, they have stories similar to yours, like at one point, what you lost 80 pounds, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, then it wasn't going to work long term necessarily without you depriving yourself. Um, but now your happiness factor went up a lot right with extra 15 pounds and you can watch a football game have pizza you know go out for a run the next day and you're eating moderately healthy or or quite healthy i'm assuming most of the time right um but i think that's something people really need to walk away with i want to speak to uh how did you change how you were eating when you were 250 as opposed to how you eat now i'm saying like on an average day um what are the differences? Uh, so the the main two that I went through, um, uh, I'm trying to think back now. So, um, you, you know, it, it was about limiting consumption, not just, you know, going out, getting the large sub, you know, maybe I get the medium instead. So uh, along the way, there was a lot of little things, um, instead of getting a sandwich, getting a wrap or, uh, 
you know, the big one was probably making sure I have a salad once a day. Um, but I mean, a salad at that point could have had chicken and bacon and uh, whatever. It was just making sure I was intaking enough vitamins and nutrients um, versus having a chicken bacon sandwich or something. <laughs> um, definitely limiting uh, late night snacking. Um, it, I was actually, last time I was at the doctor, she was like, oh, you, you know, do you, uh, do, 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 I put on like five pounds since last year or something. She goes, oh, a lot of late night snacking. I'm like, I have yogurt and fruit at night. She goes, that's okay. That doesn't really count, but it does, but it doesn't. But you know, that instead of a bowl of ice cream. Um, and then along the way, um, what really helped me kind of get over those final humps were, um, you know, just limiting dairy for some reason. I don't know. You, you, you might know more about it, but uh, limiting my dairy intake um, became a vegetarian. Uh, I did it for training reasons and then kind of stuck with it for the last three years or so now. Um, and then the biggest one for me, which uh, um, is uh, I, I quit drinking. Um, so it's been six, almost six years now, because um, that one was always fluctuating. And then, as, as I'm sure a lot of people know, you go out, you have a couple beers, a couple beers leads to chicken wings, chicken wings and pizza, this, that, the other thing, a couple bowls of popcorn. Um, so there was there was a lot to that, um, which, which that actually helped in a lot of other ways, too. But, uh, you know, th those are probably the, the main things, main big things when people ask. Yeah, a bunch of things there. First off, congrats with the alcohol. Um, you know, I'm not an anti-alcohol guy. I personally don't drink, but maybe two or three a year. Um, I had similar experience with you, not with weight as much, but just health in general. We're like two, three, four drinks, and then you're having chicken wings and blah, blah, blah. Then you wake up the next day, you feel like shit, you don't train, right? It's just a horrible, it's a horrible cycle. Um, so that's cool hearing that second thing, um, vegetarian, you talk about dairy, all this different stuff, you know, there are so many ways to eat, right. Mm -hmm. And everyone's body responds differently to different ways. Um, so congrats to you for figuring out what works for you. Um, you know, I think too many people are looking for the one way, right? Low carb, high carb, low fat, high fat, carnivore, vegetarian, vegan, keto. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. But me and Andy here, um, one of our uh, staff members here, and he's super smart with nutrition. We always talk about people like experiment and see what works for you. Um, your body changes as you get older, right? Like um, activities change. And so I think that's so cool that you found, you know, what's working for you right now. Um, you know, obviously things could change in the future, but that's, that's very neat, Jake. Very cool. Back pain, headaches, and discomfort plague the majority of humans walking around each day. Chiropractic care can be the solution to feeling your best. I know for me personally, it has had a huge impact on how I feel day to day. The problem is that many people fear going to the chiropractor and getting their first adjustment. The team at Lombardi Chiropractic are the best of the best, a team that I've worked with for over 12 years. Visit their website at LombardiChiropractic.com and when you call, let them know you are a listener of the Co-Movement Gym Podcast. The majority of supplements on the market are junk and a waste of money. Lack of regulation allows these companies to sell cardboard and a pill, and they get away with it. It's important to purchase your supplements from a company you trust, which for us at Co-Movement is Native Path Supplements. Shop their products at nativepath.com and use code COMO15 for a nice discount at checkout. That's C-O-M-O-15. Law enforcement officers have one tough job. While some calls may be routine, many are not oftentimes putting officers in unpredictable situations. Thinline Martial Arts is an apparel company that promotes defensive tactics training for officers so that they can be equipped to safely handle a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation. Purchasing apparel from Thinline Martial Arts promotes this message and allows more officers to attend training. Go to thinlinemartialarts.com and use code COMO15, that's C-O-M-O-15, to receive a 15% discount on us. Did you know a clean house reduces anxiety, increases your productivity, improves sleep, and decreases stress? Yes, all of those health benefits just from having a clean house. 
The problem is that no one finds cleaning fun, except for the great folks at Home Sweet Home Cleaning. Mention the Co-Movement Gym podcast and receive 20% off deep cleans for all clients who sign on using the reoccurring services and start enjoying a clean house today. I want to ask you a question, and this is more of a psychology mindset type thing. Do you get nervous about gaining weight if you don't run as much or train as much? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's one of those things. I, I mean, I'm, I, it's always on the, the back of my mind. Sometimes I'm able to push it in the back. Um, like I said, even last night with that pizza, um, you know, I just in the back of my mind, I'm like, all right, well, I have to make sure I get up and run. Um, I remember, you know, those first couple of races I was doing, whether they're halves, maybe a marathon. I was so worried about what I was intaking even during the race. Um, just because, like, you know, like, oh, I, I had two cliff bars when I ran a marathon. Like, I'm, I'm going to blow right back up. Um, so it's really, and there's probably more of the mindset to it all. It's realizing that, like, food's not your enemy. It's just making sure that uh, what you're doing, what you're eating is healthy um, or, or healthy or it has a purpose. Um, so, you know, I love salads. I love this. I love that. Um, you, you know, just just the, the stuff I'm putting in my body is going to help me become a better runner. So in the back of my mind, it's always still there. Like, oh, you, you know, you, you do have to watch what you have to eat. But then I also realize, like, oh, I'm going to go bust out a 20 mile run this weekend. So I think it's OK if I have you know, a two egg wrap instead of a one or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, now, if your mileage reduced by half today, what would you change with how you eat, if anything? Um, probably the best one would be, so the two things would probably be smaller portions. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, uh, so like in a typical day, uh, I'll have like a breakfast wrap, which will be, you know, two eggs, um, some vegetables, uh, maybe a little cheese and then like a smoothie, uh, especially if I've ran in the morning, you know, protein shake sort of deal, a uh, smoothie type deal. Um, and then I'll have a little snack before lunch. Usually I'll have a salad, uh, for lunch or something. And then I'll have, um, a snack, a more substantial snack at three thirty, four o'clock at work um and then come home and eat dinner so what i would probably do is you know cut out the shake cut out the extra snack in the afternoon um just all those things that i use right now to kind of help uh re refuel the body um mm -hmm. or especially if i'm going for a run at night or going to work out at night like those things i'm using to, to fuel the body then um you know just cut those out and make sure that what I'm putting in my body still, still has a purpose and, uh, and still tastes good. Cause that, that's also the important thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely, it's absolutely important. We, we hear from people that say, you know, I've got, I've eaten uh chicken and broccoli for, you know, two months and I've lost all this weight and that's great. I'm sure your body's thank you at some level, but you didn't enjoy that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so there's a hybrid blend there. I find with myself too, I don't struggle with weight issues, but if I train less, um, I have to eat less, um, like for sure. It's just, uh, yeah, calories in calories out at some level. Right. Yeah. Yeah, All right, I mean, so, it's, it's important, but I mean, it's not the most important thing in the world. So, yeah, absolutely. So Jake, um, let's talk about training. How many hours a week do you train and, uh, approximate mileage in a week? Um, so on average, I'll probably go. So, so, well, right now I'm, I'm training for a race in November. Um, so you're kind of catching me on a, my last upswing, um, but on, on average throughout the year, uh, we usually run for the calendar year or whatever it's called. So um, like this year, I'll try to get 2,023 miles um, uh, over that so far, which is well, over over that or on pace for over that so far, um, which is nice. So on average, it's probably 45 to 50 miles um, straight. Uh, if obviously when training comes along, that can bump up to 60, 70 miles. Um, you're talking... I don't know, 12 hours a week or so, um, long runs on the weekends, 45 minutes to an hour during the week. Um, and then 
yeah, four or five hours on the weekend. Are you doing any other training during the week other than running? Are you supplementing strength training, stretching, biking, anything like that, or just straight running right now? Um, this week is straight running because uh, for some reason I wanted to do, to do doubles every day because I thought that would be fun. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not bad. But, uh, yeah, no, I'll usually go to the gym um, for half hour, 45 minutes, three days a week maybe, um, kind of depending on the schedule. Um, just kind of doing more full, full body, focusing on different parts. Um, and then, uh, as all runners, you know, I'm definitely not as great on stretching as I should be. Um, but you know, if we're standing around after a group run, I'll stretch then, (laughs) um, biking, I'll do out a necessity, not a, not a, a big fan of it. Um, it's definitely uh, beneficial, but I just, I prefer to run. So, but my, uh, my mechanics about 12 miles up the road. So I'll bike to his, uh, his shop to pick up the car or bike home afterwards or something like that. Family lives around the corner. So I'll bike there sometimes too. Nice. Are you running mostly at a, like a zone one pace? Uh, uh, no, I mean, it all just kind of depends. Um, more just kind of whatever I'm feeling that day. Um, mm-hmm. today it was, Today was probably more zone one, zone two. Uh, it's, it's a bit rainy out, had the day off, you know, just, just had to get ready for this. So uh, just kind of took my time, ran, ran some hills around here. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, there's there's speed work involved, there's intervals, um, tempo work. So it, it all kind of just depends on the day and uh, what kind of, what, what you know, when I wake up or what I really feel like doing. Yeah, that's wild. So for listeners that might not have caught what you said the first time, you're shooting for 2,023 miles of running uh, this year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive, man. That's that's some serious volume. That's good. And let's add in there the vert also. I looked at your Strava um, leading up to the Brookfield Classic, and, uh, you know, we were all impressed. We were like, damn, like, you know, he does some climbing. So. <laughs> Oh, it's a, it's definitely a benefit of, of living out in the country. Uh, I, I have, I live kind of on top of a hill. So, you know, my, my normal, uh, we'll say five, six mile run has two to 300 feet of bird. And then we have, we have some great parks around here, which, which are great, you know, b- being in the Finger Lakes, just being able to go up and down and all around and have some fun. Yeah. Thanks Jake for being on the show. We will continue our conversation next week where we dive into the Brookfield classic training goals happiness, and the mighty mosquito trail race. One last message. I ask that you please check out our show sponsors, Lombardi Chiropractic, Home Sweet Home Cleaning, Native Pass Supplements, and Thin Line Martial Arts. Their links are in the description. Not only do these companies produce outstanding products and services, but they're providing an enticing discount to all listeners who use code COMO15, that's C-O-M-O-15, at checkout, or when you give them a call.